hi welcome to my channel and today i have another theater vlog for you so today i'm heading to the lowry to see a new musical called la bamba i'm sat in the stalls today i can't remember what row i think i'm sort of near the back of the stalls and yeah i'm really looking forward to it i managed to get the ticket for um 20 pound plus booking booking fee because there was an offer on on manchester theater for 20 pound best available seat so i'm going on my own lawrence is looking after the kids tonight and i'm really looking forward to it i always love to see a new musical i think this one's a duke box musical i don't know too much about it but i think it's a duke box musical so obviously i'll show you around the theater show you a view for my seat show you any merch if they've got any and then i'll review the show once i get home so yeah i hope you enjoy this little vlog So I've just arrived at Media City, I just got off this tram here at uh, Lowry's just in front of me but I'm quite early now because as soon as I got off my Ultringham tram the Media City tram was here so it's only about half six, I've got about an hour until the show starts so I'm still going to head in, I might just sit down, maybe get a drink and sit down for a little bit before the show um, but yeah I'm going to walk, I'm going to walk to the theatre now and just sit down. Okay, so I've just arrived outside of Larry now. There's the poster for La Bamba. I'm just gonna head in, so I think about an hour till it starts, but we'll go and buy a programme and have a look around the theatre. Okay, so I've just picked up a programme. These are five pounds. I, uh, like I thought, there's no other merch for the show just programs so I'm just gonna have a look around maybe get a drink Since I got quite a while till the show starts, I thought I'd come up the escalators and uh, just have a little look around up here. Don't often go up here, so just see the view from up here. So in the galleries at the moment, they've got the Julie Donsell Axel Shift exhibition, which we are going to hopefully take the kids to um, this week, I think, and no, next week. But yeah, these are some of the stuff I think they sell in the Lowry shop downstairs. This is this is the exhibition space, and then this is where they do like kids activities. Say, but in 
here. This is where they do like kids stuff, which I've never actually taken the kids to, but probably should do because they've got all like creative things, creative play. Looks really good in there. So I'll have to take the kids there one day. But Alice doesn't like things when it's busy and with its school holidays, it is quite busy, so probably not the best thing for her in school holiday time. Yeah, just thought I'd show you around upstairs because they don't usually come up this way. you've got like a little model of the Lowry which is really cool there you go and that's the bridge that me and Lauren's often walk over yeah it's a nice little model this looks so good Alice and Leo would love this I have to bring them up here to see it. So this is on next July. This is on in October. And then this is on now. So we went to see this last week. Kids absolutely love this. We've seen that already. But yeah, we'll have to definitely try and come and see this next year. These are some other kids shows that are coming. It's just in December. And then this is next year. Alice and Leo absolutely love Bluey, so we may have to try and get tickets for that one. And we've got some pictures of some famous people on the walls here. I don't really know who most of them are. So I'm actually in the store, so I'm going to head down in a minute. So if you don't know, the Lara does actually have some studio space. I think it's through there, yeah, the studio. I've never actually been in there. But they do have some small productions in there. I think me and my sister used to come a while ago to see a lot of operas. And they used to do talks before the opera or after opera. I think they used to be through there. So I definitely have been through there, I think. So, yeah, there we go. I think the auditorium should be opening soon because it is, I think it's like 10 past 7, so. There we go. Okay, so just heading down back down to the stalls now. Bar area is looking quite busy now. So yeah, gonna head down, it's just down here. Okay, so this is my ticket for today's performance. I'm in stores, Royal seat 14. I need to go in door J. So this should be door J. Just here. Yeah. Door J. Okay, so I'm on row L. I can't remember which number, just need to check. 
so number 14. <laughs> Don't think I've ever sat this close before in the lorry. Okay, so I'm now in my seat. I'm on row L, seat 14. And I've never sat this close actually in the stores before. I actually know I did, but we went to see uh, Ocean at the end of the lane. I'll just show you the view. Okay, so this is the view from my seat. It's a really good central view. And I think the show should be starting in 10 minutes, so I'll get back to you in the interval. the interval and I am enjoying the show but I think the story is a little bit lacking. Dancing's great, singing's great but just not much of a story to it. But I'll get back to you now when I get home and give you a full review.
few days later. I've found it really hard to find time to review the show now that the children are home. Um, obviously it's summer half term so I find it really hard to find a quiet time to film anything but currently they're watching telly so I thought I would quickly do my review for La Bamba. So I went to see La Bamba on Friday the 18th of August at the Lowry in Salford. Um, I ended up getting a cheap ticket because they were doing an offer on at Manchester Theatre so I think it was £20 best available seat plus booking fee and transaction fee so it ended up being about £25 for the ticket. So I was sat in the stalls on row L, seat 14, and that was a really good central view. And you could see the whole stage. I would definitely recommend that seat again. Um, if I go to the Lowry again, it's probably a seat I would definitely try and buy because I thought the view was absolutely excellent from there. I think you're just um, the right, right amount back to be able to see the whole stage really well so yeah definitely recommend that seat i'm not sure how much that seat is usually i'm guessing at least around 50 pounds because it is a very good seat obviously there's lots of leg room in the lowry stalls so leg room was great and yeah definitely a very good seat uh, so with La Bamba being a new musical there wasn't any merchandise for the show there was a program which I uh, showed you before. This is the programme. This was £5. Unfortunately, mine is a little bit messy because on the way home, the heavens opened and it was just absolutely pouring down. So, so to try and not get this wet, I had to fold it. I had to fold it to get it in my bag. So yeah, that's why it's a little bit worn. But yeah, this was £5. So if you don't know anything about La Bamba, it is a new jukebox musical, which has like, latin feel pop music in it such as like ricky martin uh, jennifer lopez shakira uh, camilla cabello um artists like that so there's lots of different um artists uh that are used for this musical or which, which have that like latin feel to it and all the music in this musical has been arranged by alfonso casado trigo I hope I'm pronouncing that right. So he's arranged all of the music for this musical. The show is directed by Ray Roderick and it features choreography by Graziano Di Prima um, and they have been on Strictly Come Dancing. I think they were professional on Strictly Come Dancing. I don't watch Strictly Come Dancing um, but I, I think he's supposed to be one of the professionals on there um there's also an assistant choreo associate choreographer um and that is giardellini so those are the choreographers for the show and this is being sort of advertised as a dance musical so there's very much a focus on dance in this musical and like i said you do have um a Strictly Come Dancing choreographer in there also one of the performers is from Strictly Come Dancing um, as well so there is definitely a big um, push on the dancing element of this musical. La Bamba tells the story of Sophia a 17 year old girl from Pacoima in LA who dreams of becoming a star and the show starts with Sophia performing a concert at the Armoury and she explains uh, to the audience why playing at that venue was meant so much to her and the reason is she's a big fan of Richie Valance who died in a plane crash along with Buddy Holly and the Big Bopper um, back in 1959 uh, and it was on the night that he was due to play at the armory um, that his plane crashed so he never made it to that venue and Sophia wanted to finish the tour that he started. So that's why she wanted to play at that venue. So Sophia then goes on to tell us the story of how she arrived at playing at that venue and her story of how she um, became famous and was able to play at the Armoury. Uh, so that is the basic story. It is Sophia telling us how she became a star and how she made it to play at the armory. And that is basically the story. 
So the story does also touch on some uh, modern day things. It, it does mention COVID and the effect it had on uh, their community, uh, how it affected them more. Um, so it mentions stuff like that. Also mentions about um, Donald Trump and the way he treated their community. Um, and it has them protesting that in the show. So it does hit on some important topics in the show um but i don't think it goes into it enough i think they're trying to make it like a fun um musical so they don't want to get too serious but i think if they are gonna point add these points in then maybe they needed to just elaborate on them a bit more and yeah they were just slightly touched on they also mentioned some other mexican traditions such as the day of the dead um which was interesting i always love uh, learning a bit about um, other people's traditions and stuff so that bit was quite interesting but they didn't again they didn't go into too much detail about it so Sophia um, is a narrator for the story she, she narrates the whole thing and I have to say I do I did think the story was a little bit lacking you don't really know a lot about the characters in the story um, I suppose it's because it's all from Sophia's point of view and she's just telling her story so I think that is probably why um, the dancing in this though is excellent, the dance numbers are really good, especially when the whole ensemble are dancing together, those dance numbers are just electric, they're really really good, um, definitely can't fault the dancing in this at all, uh, the ensemble members, the dancers are perfect, loved all the dancing in this um, really a lot, also I thought the lighting was actually quite good in this show, um, how they use lighting in the dancing performances i enjoyed that aspect of it the set for the show was very simple it was a static set nothing moved on it um it sort of had these big light boxes at the sides which were sort of flush and um different colors at different times but yeah the set was pretty static and there wasn't even a lot of props either um it was a very, very simple set and very simple props. Performance-wise, I have to say Inez Fernandez, who plays Sophia, is absolutely amazing. She is, she's on stage for practically most of the show, dancing, singing. Um, she has a lot of energy. I don't know how she did it, but she was absolutely amazing. Her dancing was great, singing was fantastic, and her acting was good as well. Um, so yeah, she's definitely one to look out for. I think she's um, going to do a lot of stuff. She's really, really good. She definitely made the show for me. I thought she was excellent. Other cast members they have Kenneth Warren. I'm not sure how you spell it, how you pronounce his second name. I think he was in The Wanted. Yeah, I don't really know much about him. I think this was his like stage debut. Um, he was okay. I wouldn't say he was fantastic. His acting was okay. Uh, his singing was okay and his dancing was just okay um yeah i'll just say his performance was okay and then the other name that was in the show was was pasha cavalli i think that's how you pronounce his second name i'm, I'm not 100 percent sure who was in strictly come dancing he wasn't in it for that long his character dies off pretty quick um but he does have some dance numbers and his dancing was excellent as you expect because he's a professional dancer um but yeah he doesn't do his part is quite small and i'm surprised they didn't utilize him more in in the dancing numbers um but yeah he was excellent in the dancing parts of the show okay so i'll now just go through the program with you and show you the rest of the cast okay so this is the program like i said this was five pounds so it just says lavamba musical souvenir program and then inside you have a little article here about the day of the dead um and then you have a q and a with graziano di prima who is the choreographer so you've got a q and a with them the day the music died so this is an article about uh richie valance and how he died along with buddy holly and the big bopper and you've got this page 
you've got some really nice production photos. We're gonna focus. There we go. Really nice production photos in there. I always love a program where you get some production photos in there. Don't you have your seams? Pop one of that too. And then it has a list of the musical numbers. So I'll just tell you what the musical numbers were. So you had Hips Don't Lie, which was originally done by Shakira. Whenever, Wherever, it's also a Shakira song. Havana, Living La Vida Loca, which is mostly known for Ricky Martin's version. Valentino, On the Floor, uh, Let's Get Loud, uh, Come On Let's Go by Richie Valens. Donna, which is another Richie Valens song. La Bamba, another Richie Valens song. Besi Mucho, uh, Vivir Mi Vida, uh, Maria, La Lorena and Mezcalito. So those are, that is the song list. And I have to say, I really enjoyed the um, ones that were actually sang in Spanish. I thought those were done really, really well by the cast. Um, and I really enjoyed those ones. So in this photo here, which is at the bottom here, it shows you the evolution of the set and how they've made it to try and look like that uh, area in LA, in Pacoima, where they have these sort of shutters and these here are to represent the shutters that are on the houses here. So that is what the set is meant to look like. Then here we have our cast list. Okay, so here's the cast list. As you can see, Inez Fernandez played Sophia. Siva Canswari uh, played Mateo. Pasha Covelle played Ricardo. Stephanie Ariza played Elena, who is Sophia's mother. She was really, really good. I thought she was great. Um, they do say that the reason why she looks so young is because that's why that's how Sophia remembers her because this is obviously supposed to be her telling the story and that's why she looks so young because she did look not much older than Sophia um, but her singing was fantastic. She sang most of the Spanish songs and she was absolutely excellent, really good. I thought she was uh, really, really good. So there's a few girls that, that play young Sophia uh, and they're their names. And then this is your ensemble. So these are the dancers. So you had Tristan Ghostkeeper, Brendan Graham, Luke Jarvis, Gabriella Rose Marchant, Nicole Maf Matthew, Bethan Mitchell, Julia Ruiz Fernandez, and Alex Sturman. And these are your understudies. So Gabriella Rose. Marchant is the understudy for Sophia, Luke Jarvis is the understudy for Matteo and Ricardo, and Nicola, Nicole Maffo, Maffio is understudy for Elena. Then you've got your band and your producers and directors. And you've got your creatives, your product and your production team. Okay, so then we have the cast biography. So this is Inez Fernandez who plays Sophia, the lead role. And this is actually her professional debut. And I have to say, for a professional debut, she was absolutely amazing. Um I'm definitely going to look forward to seeing what she does next because she was really, really good in this. I mean, her singing, her acting, 
her dancing she was fantastic so I'm really looking forward to seeing what she does next because I think she is really good especially if this is her professional debut uh, it says here that she's born in Portugal and uh, yeah I thought she was really really good then we have Siva Kanswaran. I'm really sorry, I I'm really bad at pronouncing names. And he played Matteo, and he is best known for being in the pop band The Wanted. Um, he's originally from Dublin, uh, and he's done some modelling acting work before. But I think this is his first time uh, doing a musical. Um, like I said before, he was okay. Um, I wouldn't say he was amazing, but he was okay in the role of Matteo. Um, Pasha Covelli, uh, I think that's how he's pronouncing it. Again, I'm sorry, I'm really bad at pronouncing names. He played Ricardo, and he is probably best known for being on Strictly Come Dancing. It's one of the professional dancers. Um, he is from Siberia, Russia originally. Um, like I said, he's a professional uh, dancer. I think he says here he joined Strictly Come Dancing as one pressures in 2011. And then in 2021, he came to the West End and he was one of the lead performers in Here Come the Boys show. Oh, and now he's touring in La Bamba. So, like I said, his dancing was fantastic. His um, his role was only a small role, really. He wasn't in it a lot. Um, but, yeah, his dancing was really, really good. Then we have uh, Stephan Stephanie Ariza, um, who played Elena, who was Sophia's mum. Yeah, she's a bit young to be playing her mum, but... The way they got around that was by saying that this is how Sophia remembers her mum looking and this is obviously Sophia's telling the story so that's how they got around her looking so young. Um, so she did the La Bamba workshop um, she's also played Martel in the Voldemort and the Teenage Hogwarts musical parody at the Edward Fringe uh, she's played Pet Patia in Rhyme Time Town Sing Alongs on Netflix. Um, she has used a voice in several video games, including Just Cause 4 and Tom Clancy's The Division 2. And yeah, those are some of the things that she's done. And she was really good. So she, I think, again, she's someone to look out for. She's not done much theatre work, um, but I thought she was really, really good. And then you go on to the ensemble. So I'm not going to go through all the ensemble. These two were amazing dancers. All really, really good. Okay. And then we have the young Sophia. So there is a younger version of Sophia in the show. And I'm pretty sure we had Leah Alqueda as are Sophia pretty sure I'm always find it really hard to um, to work out which the young children are because they often look quite similar but I'm pretty sure it was her that we had and I think that is more or less it for the program just have a few more production shots here there we go so yeah, in summary, I did really enjoy this show. I just found the story a little bit lacking. I needed a bit more depth to the story. Um, but the dancing was excellent. The singing was really good. I enjoyed all the songs that they picked for the show. I thought they all worked really well. And it was just a fun night out. I just found, I came out with a smile on my face and I really enjoyed it. Uh, I just wished there was a bit more of a story to it. Um, but if that's not what you're going for, if you're going for the dance, you're going for the music, then you'll definitely really enjoy this show. So for me, I'd say this is a three star show. Still really enjoyable. Uh, I would still definitely recommend it, especially if you enjoy dance and the Latin uh, pop music. 
you'll definitely really enjoy this show so i hope you've enjoyed this little vlog and little review if you have please do give it a like if you do uh, enjoy this sort of vlog review videos then please do subscribe to my channel i do lots of them on this channel i do have quite a few shows coming up i've got life of pie i've got uh cuckoo at the liverpool uh everyman theater i have lizzie at the hope mill theater coming up um i'm hoping to see jamie everyone's talking about Jamie at the Lowry soon as well also I went to London recently and saw five West End shows and just got those videos to edit so I've got lots and lots of bit of vlog and reviews to come so if you enjoy that sort of content then please do subscribe and hit that notification bell and you'll be notified as soon as any new videos go up so yeah I hope you've enjoyed the video if you have do give it a like don't forget to subscribe and I hope to see you again soon bye